Good morning to everyone. My name is Javier Rivera, and I'll try to summarize our paper titled Estimating Phenotypic Traits from UAV-Based RGB Imagery. This is a joint work between the um, Video and Image Processing Laboratory and the Digital Photogrammetry Research Group. I am from the Imaging Lab, so I will emphasize the image processing part. First, I usually start defining the word phenotyping, even though at this point it's not, may, may not be necessary. But anyway, phenotype is uh, any measurable characteristic or trait of a plant. So examples of features that we can uh, observe from visible light include color, height, leaf number, and canopy aperture. Um, there exist specific devices to measure fluorescence intensity, which is a result of photosynthesis. And the big question in this field is how a phenotype is related with the genes of a plant, which are a result of the environment and their interaction. So then a phenotype, phenotyping is just the process of, of characterizing phenotypes. And the plant that we phenotype is sorghum which um, you may not be aware that it's the fifth most important cereal. And although it's used mainly for food, it's a good candidate for biofuel production because it's considered a um, plant very tolerant to temperature and drug stress. We have a 10-acre field at Purdue University, and that's where we acquire our AMH data set. We, both, we use both a custom-made truck that we call Phenomobile, and we also use um, drones. We will focus on this paper on the drone imagery. So the, one of the jobs of the photogrammetry group is to pre-process the thousands of images that we acquire from drones. Uh, first, they rectify the lens distortion um, by, by estimating the camera's internal characteristics. And the second step is to fuse all these images into one big orthophoto of the entire field, of the entire sorghum field. And to do this, the position and orientation of acquired imagery of the thousands of images a, um, and the coordinates of sparse points are estimated. And then, thanks to the prior information of the UAV trajectory, which is known, the exterior orientation parameters are estimated. In the paper, you can see a nice example of a point cloud of the points that we use for matching the images using SIFT. And this is an example of the generated order photo. Um, we mainly use this for our image processing tasks. So one of the methods that we developed aims to estimate the leaf count. And to do this, we convert the image from RGB, RGB to HSV color space. And using a pixel-wise stress holding that I explain later, we obtain a leaf mask. We count how many pixels uh, are classified as sorghum, as plant material, and we scale this number up with the pixel leaf ratio that we have trained from our manual ground truthing, and we get our final estimate. This black box, pixel-wise stress holding, um, generates this leaf mask using this equation, which tries to um, capture the characteristic green color of, of the leaves while ignoring um, um, the soil and the panicles, which have usually low saturation. With this method, we can track the number of leaves in a sp uh, small region of the field. So for example, with this order photo from June 15 of last year, we get um, for these four images, which are granted to come from the same real world coordinates, thanks to the orthorectification process. We obtain the leaf mask, and we plot the evolution of leaves in this region, which, as expected, uh, grows with time. Of course, we can do the same thing with the whole field and say that with, um, with this image from, last, from June, of last year, we have 200,000 leaves. And we can also get a 
a leaf heat map that indicates which region of the field have higher density of leaves. But the leaf count is, the number of leaves is not enough. We also want to get estimates of leaf length, width, uh, and color. And to do that, we do need to segment the leaves this time. So another method segments the, um, um, the, leaves, the leaves in the field. And ours is a, a bottom-up approach in which we try to reconstruct the fields, the, the, the leaves, from their basic components until we get um, final leaf segmentation. Um, we use a technique similar to stroke width transform, which was developed by Microsoft to detect text. And using this, we detect these leaf slices, and then um, assuming that the, the leaves are not too wide and are, to a certain extent, straight, we construct leaf segments, and from, from them, we connect to build le uh, full leaves. Um, the, reason that, the reason why there may be more than one leaf segment per leaf is that there may be leaf crossings. So we try to avoid these situations. And this is a result from the ortho mosaic section from July 15 of last year. And you can see that even though the leaf count is not too far away from the ground truth, there's still some room for improvement, especially due to the, the false, false negatives. The third method that we develop aims to locate the exact coordinates of each sorghum plant. And the reason that we want this is that we not only want to have, we not only want to say we have one million leaves in the whole field. We also want to have um, particular specific estimates for each uh, plant. So, so we propose a statistical model that exploits the irregularity of the field as the plants are sown in rows. Also, the um, distance between plants, which is called uh, intra-row intra -row, uh, spacing, is of particular interest in agronomy. This is an example of a section of the orthorectified um, ortho image. And from the ground truth um, positions, you can see that they follow a clear um, line structure, which we take advantage of. So in our statistical model, we model the distance dn from a sorghum pixel n to its closest plan c of, c of n as a exponential distribution. This model assumes that a, the probability density of a sorghum pixel only depends on its closest sorghum plan. And the parameter sigma, which is both at the same time, the mean and the standard deviation of d sub m can be interpreted as, as the average size of a sorghum plant. As for the prior term, we assume that we take all the plants that are aligned with a specific plant, and we assume that that plant follows a, a normal, normal distribution. So, um, in this normal distribution, the covariance matrix, thanks to the fact that we're using a um, orthorectified image, um, we know that the coordinates, that the lines and rows of the image are aligned with the real um, coordinates of the, of the plants in the field. So we know that this covariance matrix is diagonal. So combi combining both the data term and the prior term, we obtain a, a map estimate, which uh, is a result of minimizing this cost function. So our approach is just to iteratively minimize this con cost function with respect to each plan in a similar way to iterative component descent. So to, to show the intuition behind this, we plot the cost map of a specific um, iteration when six of the plans are, show, are fixed, and we're trying to get the, the estimate of the free plan, which we move, and ideally we would um, get this global minimum as the estimate at this iteration. 
So as a conclusion, we have shown the feasibility of using consumer grade digital cameras on, on UAVs to estimate phenotypic traits, and we have proposed three methods. One is for leaf counting, one is for leaf segmentation, and the third one is for the estimation of plant centers. And we want to use the plant locations to obtain plant-to-plant -plant variability of phenotypic, phenotypic traits. And as for future work, we want to estimate also other phenotypic traits like canopy aperture. And the last thing is that we realize that the sorghum, sorghum pixel positions is not all the information that we have about the plant centers. In fact, the leaf angle shows uh, a lot of information about where the plant center is as the leaves usually grow from the stalk, so they point towards it. So we want to use the leaf, information, leaf angle information in the plant location model as a new cost function, as a new term in this cost function. And that's it. If you have any questions, I'll be more than glad to answer.